so the last seven months, my focus has been on people who have been released uh, from prison in Iran mm -hmm. and the torture that they endure, especially people who've been raped. I see when someone comes um, uh, and speak up about something that has happened to them, people really want to shut it down. Have shame about your body so that it is protected. Mm -hmm. Have shame. Don't speak about the issue that has happened because speaking about it is going to disrupt the environment, is going to disrupt our family, is going to disrupt dynamics, and that is more uncomfortable. Hi, welcome to Joy Culture. I'm Toranj. I'm Anusha. And today in this episode, we have a guest over. Azadeh Jun is a psychotherapist and she accepted our invitation and we're very happy to have her over. Thank you girls. Thank you so much. Um, yes, my name is Azadeh. I'm a psychotherapist and I'm very, very delighted to be here with you girls. Oh, we're so Thank happy you for to having you. Today's episode, what is it going to be about, Tomanj? You know, actually Azadeh um, and I were speaking and she was mentioning um, the shame that she has noticed among her, um, her clients that have around sexuality and mostly their private parts. Mm. And we were talking about how we call it private parts and yet we need to be open enough to be able to discuss issues around, you know, um, sexual abuse and sexual disease. Um, and our relationship to our body. Mm -hmm. And I would love to hear more about, you know, what you experienced um, and what inspired you to talk about this and where you think we should take the conversation and the culture to be able to, um, to be create, create a culture of wellness around our mm -hmm. bodies. Sure. So um, since seven months back, I started um, seeing a lot of... Um, clients from Iran and that's how I notice that mm. there is a need when it comes to talking about the most difficult parts of our body which is associated with our private parts. Mm. Uh, however, I had noticed uh, the same as in the Western culture where I had talked to my clients, but I think it was very intensified when I, on a daily basis, are contact with uh, survivor of rape and torture. Mm -hmm. And then it became very prominent to me that we have a problem on our hands. And the problem is that what is it associated with mm -hmm. and how do we talk about it? And actually, what, why are we not talking about it? Yeah. So hence why I reached out to you and I said, this is very important for us to be able to dissect this and give people the tools to be able to feel comfortable talking about their private parts. Yeah. Private parts is obviously, like you said, something private, but at the same time, we want to be able to be open and feel comfortable. So there is that mind boggle. Mm -hmm. How do you approach it? And most importantly, how do you talk to children about it? Yes. Can you be, uh, I would love for you to be specific and tell me about um, what kind of clients you had and what the issue was. So, um, so the last seven months, my focus has been on people who have been released uh, from prison in Iran mm -hmm. and the torture that they endure, especially people who've been raped. And when I consult with them, they are comfortable talking about the act of the rape that happened to them. But when it comes to disclosing uh, what actually is happening to their, uh, the medical part of it, what's the happening, the diseases, the tears, the difficulties that they are now having after that torture, that's something that they usually do not, not feel well. comfortable talking and they rather want to send it as a message they rather write text it text, text you. me and that to me says that there is a glitch between being able to speak and being able to write, write it. it yeah do you think i mean this one it goes more specifically to our culture because uh we taught shame i grew up in iran i grew up in the school of schools of iran and i know how much they use um, shame and guilt as tools to hold on to power, to, to control women mostly. Yes. And um, obviously using shame and 
guilt is a big deal in, 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 for, for, their cli for your clients, right? Absolutely. Because that's what they're feeling mostly. Yeah. They're in the shame and they're the, in the guilt. That's why they cannot say it. Yeah, they grew up with it, like you said, in school. And on top of it, I'm sure school, also their parents growing up with that, not talking about it. And it's a taboo. It's a, we say it, Abe, I don't know what it is in English word, but basically what it says, like, this is a taboo to talk about your mm. private part. Yeah. We should stay away from this topic. So whatever happens in regards to that, that's something that we do not talk about. We just shove it under the rug. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the Western culture that we see, um, I, this is what, I'm what, what I witnessed and tell me if, I, if, 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 I, if something is missing. Um, I see when someone comes um, uh, and speak up about something that has happened to them, people really want to shut it down. Mm -hmm. People really, like they, we, have, we have a, a, a population, a good majority of people that embrace it. They're like, oh my God, thank you for speaking up. It's helping us too. Yes. It's helping us. Uh, to speak up to, oh, it's creating a safe space for a lot of people. And the other hand, there are people who are like, no, why did you say that? Shut, they're trying to shut it down. And it's like everywhere in the world that when it comes to sexual stuff, things mm -hmm. like this, yes. they don't want to face it. No, they don't want to face it. And it's so funny that you say that. I had done uh, these group therapy for um, Iranians, specifically what's happening in Iran. And one thing that came up in this group is that a lot of people had experienced uh, in this particular group, four out of 12 had experienced rape. Wow. None of them wanted to talk about it. And after a few sessions, one girl attended and she freely spoke about it. And that was a moment that the rest of them felt comfortable mm -hmm. enough. Before that, they felt so shameful because, you know, one shame, person stepped guilt. Forward. Mm -hmm. Yes, one person, person stepped step forward, forward and the shame and guilt the rest of the people felt in regards to this tragedy that happened to them was okay for them to be able to speak up. It, I feel like um, we can talk about the energy of that. We, I feel like when we want to step in a new energy, something that is more serving and heal a part of ourselves, we get uncomfortable at first mm -hmm. and it's because it's unknown. Mm -hmm. It's very uncomfortable to step into this new space, new atmosphere that we don't know what's going to happen. And this uncomfortable um, discomfort space normally holds us back. It's like, you know what? This doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel familiar. It's unknown. Let me go back. Even though the shame and the guilt is not, they don't make you feel well, but you, it's familiar. Mm -hmm. You know them. Mm -hmm. You've been practicing them so most families when they deal with their children that they been molested or anything like that or the children coming up to parents want to talk about it they're going to step into a very uncomfortable space mm -hmm. and that's mostly holds people back mm -hmm. can we talk about that a little bit because it's always because once you talk about something once you verbalize it that means that it's becoming reality Mm -hmm. And this is the reality that we are running from, mm -hmm. right? It's we are running point. from that reality because then if it's reality, that means, is it, is it true? Then if it is true, then I need to deal with those feelings, uncomfortable mm -hmm. feelings. Mm -hmm. And I have to do something about it, perhaps. Maybe I have to face that person who did this to my mm -hmm. child. And I know a lot of parents whose children come to them with such stories they want to, like you said, sweep it under the rug and not acknowledge it because our society hasn't created a place for us to really go comfortably to report such issues in a way that um, doesn't feel like we're triggering some shame. Mm. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and taboo, like you said. Yeah, and, and I want our audience to know 50% of that healing come from somebody believing us. Mm. Because once some, it, first of all, it, like we talk about the shame and guilt and be, keeping everything in, in, in a secret. Once that person has the courage to come and speak of it and they not being believed, that crushed them even mm. more. Because now you're saying my experience the horrific experience that happened to me in my body is not valid, mm. is not true. You can't and see it. 
you can't see it. So that means that we shouldn't talk about it. Yeah. So I want to encourage people when somebody approach you, whether it's your child, your sister, your mother, your friend, it doesn't matter. Your brother, mm -hmm. believe them, listen to them because that's 50% of their healing. I even, it is very, it's very interesting because you said I triggered that thing that I, I think I've to, I told you about it. I've noticed that when people come in and they speak up, finally, one thing that is common is that, oh, she wants attention. He wants attention. Have you noticed that? Like they say this mm -hmm. sentence, mm -hmm. like this, this is a very common sentence. Oh, they want attention. And I always wonder, why would someone oh, want attention with this? With this, like, this is a topic. Yeah. Why this is a very hard want... topic to exactly. pick to get attention from? Yeah. Like, it has a lot, and it's not even Iranian thing. That I think around the world, there's a lot of a lot of shame around it. Why would you pick this topic to come in to and get atti attention? Attention. Mm -hmm. So, what what do you say to that? Like, what do you, what what would what would we say to things like this when they're like they want attention? I think that people who says this <laughs> means that they are themselves creating that scenario and narrating for themselves that mm. they want attention because you have to think about you are in this closet that is dark that is uncomfortable not pleasant and you open this closet up for a glimpse of light mm -hmm. and somebody boom shuts shut. that yeah go back i want to speak a little bit about shame mm -hmm. um Shame is one of the lowest frequencies that we have, and it has an emotional signature, um, an energy signature, and it is of a very low frequency. And what shame does innately makes you hide and go into darkness. And just like bacteria, bad things fester in the dark. Mm -hmm. When there's shame attached to something, it goes in the dark. And horrible, horrible things fester in the dark. And the more that we have the courage to bring things to the light, because I believe that um, our intention for shame in the first place is the idea that the energy of shame is an energy of protection. Have shame about your body so that it is protected. Mm -hmm. Have shame. Don't speak about the issue that has happened because speaking about it is going to disrupt the environment, is going to disrupt our family, is going to disrupt dynamics. And that is more uncomfortable. And that somehow being shameful is a protective mechanism. However, it is not because it continues to keep things in the dark mm -hmm. and more horrible things continue we'll to away. happen and fester in that darkness. So we need to have the courage to shine a light on it and to be comfortable to speak about these things. And what you were saying earlier to me was that, you know, a beautiful way to bring this topic up to our children is to go into their space mm -hmm. and to openly speak about sexuality, you know, their private parts, naming their private parts, saying, this is your penis, this is your vagina. We don't even have to call it private parts. We know that it is personal to you, but this is how you protect it. And I would love for you to speak a little bit more about that. I loved what you said about going into the space mm -hmm. of the child Playing with them because, and this idea behind. Yeah, them. the idea is because kids haven't developed those uh, vocabularies yet to be able to express how they feel. Mm -hmm. So since they haven't developed that, we as an adult, we need to be able to give them the tools. And how do we do that? We enter their world. And kids, we all know, they... Mm, identify they learn about the world through play yeah that's their that's their comfort zone that's the atmosphere that they thrive the best so the best thing is for us to enter that world and start to mm, penetrate the things that we want to be able to for them to know mm -hmm. and acknowledge when it comes to their body parts and if unfortunately, if something happened to them, for them to be able to feel comfortable. You have to understand, think about what your comfort level is. Where is your comfort zone? Is it in the shower? Is it you in your bed? Playing, that's is for theirs. Me. It's theirs. Yeah. So go in there, start playing. If they want to play with dolls, with, with cars, with puzzle, whatever it is, enter that world and embrace it and then start 
educating if you need to educate or if you need to be curious to see what have happened yeah because kids they haven't associated shame to it if we haven't attached to it yet mm -hmm. so they're we very open to talk about them. it yeah. right yeah. it's we adults who put that on teach them teach them about it yes it's like we get we get them conditioned with mm -hmm. the way we got conditioned exactly exactly i love that so going whether you want to find out if something has happened or you want to educate going into your child's play area and i love what you said about being on the same level as them yes absolutely so when you want to talk to them have the same eye level sit down talk to them be close not too far and have not big long sentences short sentences so they can be able to digest, digest. what's mm. come their way and not complicated words words that they are easy to be able to grasp on so they can also use it when they do their play and when they talk about it to other kids or siblings mm, yes. i love that and i think a lot of parents don't have the tools and it's okay and it's okay to seek a therapist or your school counselor or um, a professional to be able to find the tools to be able to have these conversations or like you said to do your own research uh, and, and I think it's so accessible right now there are books about it there are books about you know things that are okay that's gonna happen touches that are okay and touches that are not okay and how do you feel comfortable about it the many many material out what there would be, what, what would, would be, be the first step for us grown-ups when someone comes up to us mm -hmm. with dealing with something like that like what what how would we react would be the best which is the hardest this is the <laughs> hardest for us to be able to is to really listen without judgment mm, that's not the key. yeah that's the key not put our own judgment into what we are receiving Mm -hmm. Because once we judge that person, that person yeah. is going to go into that darkness again. again. And if they took the courage and if they, because it's not that this happened to them and tomorrow they're going to talk about it. There's a lot of, of processing. Steps. Should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I. And once they ha took the courage to talk about it, create an environment for them to be mm -hmm. able to speak. Yeah. And if you don't have the tools, you don't have the tools. You don't need to fix other people's problems. What yes. you do need to is to be able to listen. Can you tell us about the fork? Oh, the fork, yes. So I think there was a video many years ago that there was a girl had a fork in her head and stuck. I, stuck in her head, but it wasn't obviously stuck. But she went over to her boyfriend and he's like, look, baby. And the boyfriend's like, oh my God, what happened to you? And as soon as he saw the fork, he wanted to go grab it and take it out. And he's like, no, 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 no. I know how to take it out. I want you to ask me how I feel about it. Mm. See, most often we know how to fix our problems, but we want someone to listen to them. Because all, what we, all we talk about in joy culture is the feeling behind everything. Mm. Everything that we do, we create family, we go after our passion and create careers and things like that is all because we want to feel something. It's because of an emotion. And if we can exchange that in a very clear way, that's when we, like, you know, our awareness becomes expanded and we become more open to more things, to know more, to learn more, to step for more stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think when something like that happens to you um, or even to someone that you love, when you seek to get to be heard, you are seeking love because in, in essence, when something negative in nature happens, you emotionally separate from from love confidence self-esteem and you want to be hurt simply to return back to the seat of mm -hmm. self-love again mm -hmm. it's like using the other person a person as a um, tool or as a vessel to, to return connect. yeah back to that love and so as a support system what we need to do is to be mirrors of that love and like you said we don't have to have the answers we can say hey i Thank you so much for trusting me with this. Mm -hmm. yes. And I'm so sorry that this happened to you and this doesn't define you. And I don't have the tools, but let's find out together. Let's do some research together. Let's find a therapist together. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. You, you don't have to have the answers. No, you don't but, have to have the answers because what happens is that when we see loved ones, when we see people in distress, that makes us uncomfortable. 
-hmm. And what we want to do, we want to quickly fix it and take that uncomfortable. When somebody cries in front of you, how do you feel? It's not, oh, what happened? Mm -hmm. How can I make it stop? Mm -hmm. We don't go down and sit with them and start conversing. We want to make it stop so then we can feel good about ourselves. So it's okay if you can't reach that feeling and it's okay for you to go to, and I also say that with parents, but also loved ones, scoop to the level where they are. If they're not ready to come out of that hole, they're not ready. Don't mm -hmm. drag them out. Mm -hmm. Go sit in that hole. Go sit in that darkness and talk to them in that darkness. And once they feel supported, they are going to get and out safe. of that. And safe, they're going to get out of that darkness. Yeah. I love how you said, like, meet them on, on that level. Yeah. And I want to just clarify that a bit. I think one of the ways that I meet someone to be able to help them is I start, uh, I, I share, you know, a little bit maybe about myself that like, hey, like I've, I don't know what you're going through, but I have felt extremely confused before too, you know, and I don't know what you need, but um, I'm willing to discover it with you and mm -hmm. see where we can move and how I can support you. Um, I just want to know you're not alone and I, whatever I can do, I would like to do, you know, yeah. and not to be like this, no. you know, like you said, the energy dynamic of, you know, I know better than you, or even my experience. Oh, you just what you experienced that. I experienced that. Everyone has experienced that. That's horrible. Dismissing it. Dismissing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think absolutely. But obviously, Tora and John, you have the tools to be able to speak of that and meet the person when they are the way you explained just touching a little bit about hey i've been there as well without right? taking away from the importance of what they're going through okay sometimes i feel like friends or whomever that coming to you you don't want it to be about you yeah mm -hmm. it's not about you no. it's about them and it's about their pain it's about their experience so that's why they're coming to you Mm -hmm. So you can mention it, but don't make it as okay. a whole thing about mm -hmm. you because it's yes. not about you. It's not about it's your not. pain. No. Okay. What would be like, this made me, this conversation just made me realize like, is there a question that we can ask in that moment? Like, what do you need? Or is there anything I can do? Are these the right questions? Yes. Because sometimes that person doesn't even know what they need. They're no, just they don't. And they're going to say, I don't know. I don't and know. And it's okay for you not to know because I don't know either. But how about we explore it? Do you think you need therapy right now? Do you think we can explore more options in terms of go look online? What is it that you need? And if you don't know, that's okay. okay. Because we both that sit means in it. We both sit in it. We both sit in that moment. And sometimes they honestly, most of the times, I would say 99%, they just want you to listen, listen. to them. Mm. They just want you That's to listen. Key. That's the key. Listen, actively listen to their pain. Because, you know, when I was working at Suicide Hotline, um, people don't have anybody that they can talk to. Mm -hmm. They don't have anybody that can listen to their pain. Mm -hmm. And that was the number one. They just called for somebody to listen. listen. Wow. wow. And of course, children approaching children is going to be different than approaching adults absolutely and could you give us a few key um on if a child has experienced something like that a few key points of how we can communicate to that child about it mm -hmm. absolutely um for parents uh, how would you even um notice it would be noticed in change of behavior so it would be more tantrums more um maybe disruptive sleep mm. all the things that because kids any change that happens to them they react mm -hmm. so look for those changes and once you look for those changes then you can start up with communicating with them and again talking coming to their level and talk to them about it uh, use very simple words to be able to discuss what happened to them. Get books. Books are great. Characters are great because they look up to those characters, favorite characters, mm. and attach those to them. And really have an 
uh, create an environment that is okay for you to talk about your private part, what happened to the private part, and what didn't happen to it, and embrace it, right? For them to get to know their private part is a very empowering tool. I always tell my clients to the girls, give them a mirror, let them explore. Let them see themselves. Let them see themselves. You give them a mirror in the morning when you do their hair, mm -hmm. what's wrong? They yes, can do the same absolutely. with their private parts to see what it is. It's okay to them to touch it mm -hmm. because that's one of the things that, oh, okay, don't touch it. Don't touch too much. Don't pull too much. It's okay. Yeah. It's their private part. They have to be, get to know that. Exploring it. Exploring it. When you say use characters, mm -hmm. do you mean for them to use their toys as, an, as a way for them to express the narrative that it, uh, might have happened to them? What do you mean by that? Use so characters? when I say characters is that, Kids have favorite characters, let's say uh, cartoons or everything. So Mickey Mouse or whatever they, they are yeah. into, use that because again, that's their world. That's what they're mm -hmm. attached mm -hmm. at the moment. Kids go through various phases constantly. One day they're attached to this, the next day they're attached to something else in terms of cartoons and toys. So talk about that, for instance, you know, Bob, for instance, mm -hmm. what did Bob do today? They're, they're much more comfortable talking about Bob than themselves oh, because I they see. don't know yet how to talk about themselves. They can't say I'm depressed mommy, but they can say Bobby, Bob is very sad today. Oh, oh, is Bob sad? How? What happened to Bob? Oh, well, you know what happened to Bob? Bob fell. Oh, how did he fell? They're come, they're very good at talking about Oh, maybe it's it's like the way they're projecting it. It's helping them to uh, release the stress or the sadness or the whatever they're feeling in that moment. The kid, the, but, but 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 the sense of I hasn't developed yet. yet. Oh, right, the sense of I who I am. Right, mm. that's why they talk in third person. Azadeh oh, did this. Azadeh is me, but they don't know Azadeh and me mm, are the, the same. same. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. That's I love that. that. I, love I that. understood that. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, this has been, been so, so helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I will include your um, Instagram as well because I think if there's anyone who has questions or wants to know more, I, I would love they for them to be able to contact you. Absolutely. You. I would love that. Absolutely. Reach out if you guys need help with anything i can direct you in and if i don't know i will tell you i don't know but i will still uh, put you in contact with someone who knows um i am not an expert when it comes to uh, child therapy uh and if you go to my instagram you will see that however i have many many colleagues that are working in that area great thank you so thank much. you so thank much of course thank you guys if you like this video, please comment, like, share, and yeah, if you think this is going to be helpful to someone, please share it with them, share it on your Instagram page, um, and do write comments. Tell us about how you have overcome shame. Um, give us some of your tools. Uh, we'd love to hear from you until next time. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. If this is the greatest video you've ever seen. Hey, hey, let's just stick to like. Okay, fine. If you like this video, please subscribe. And remember to share, like, and turn on notifications.